like for those of you who don't like uh, pizza, I have a new recipe from Menage. Bagel with Doritos, jalapeno, bacon, and ketchup. <laughs> Is it gluten free? Something different. Well, he did eat it until he read a few articles about how that might not be the best for his health. So I thought it was really tasty. So. Um, thank you for coming. Um, uh, I will do a brief introduction to Mark. I won't repeat the nature of the session since it says so very actionable intelligence for intelligent mark marketers. Uh, just to give a bit more background, you know about Mark's role at York University, but prior to York University, he was social media manager at Intuit. Uh, prior to that, he was, we met, we were web redesign manager at uh, the Royal Ontario Museum, responsible for the redesign of their website. He's also been a, uh, on contract, he's worked on contract uh, on SEO and SEM and social media for Eco Generation services, uh, Bridge Works Interactive Marketing, and as a communication specialist at the Association of Canadian Advertisers. Uh, what he's going to obviously talk about today is social media analytics, measurement and monitoring. He's going to go through some of the platforms he uses. Uh, while he touches on Radiant 6, he knows that we don't use Radiant 6 anymore. Some of us feel, thankfully, <laughs> we don't use Radiant 6 anymore. Uh, but he's going to go through how he uses some other platforms like Hootsuite and Proud, Proud Social for measurement. Uh, is that a fair summary? Absolutely. Okay, turn it over to Mark. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. So can everybody uh, hear me pretty well? Good. My big bad voice is coming through. Good. So we're going to be talking about, as you can see from slide number one, social media monitoring and measurements, actionable intelligence for intent, intelligent marketers. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the time on my iPhone here so we don't go too far over. So why are we here today? Uh, anybody know who this guy is? Yeah. And his name would be, okay, I'll spoil it for you. Peter Drucker, uh, one of the world's greatest management gurus. He has a famous quote, what gets measured gets managed. I have a quote, what gets monitored is what matters. <laughs> and you can see that I made my photo slightly smaller than Peter's. I, I hold him that level of skin. Sorry? Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, that was back in the day. I could have cut up this, but I chose not to. So today I want to talk a bit about social media monitoring and measurement dashboards. Enterprise and free options, strengths and weaknesses. Tactics for finding actionable marketing insights from social media. Tools and tactics for measuring results. And strategies for real-time monitoring and analytics. So quick show of hands, who's actively monitoring social media as part of their duties right now? Okay, so we have. Uh, what tools are you using? I know it's not Radiant, but is it all the same or using any different ones? Yeah. Anything else out there? That's pretty much it. Okay. What goals are you trying to achieve with social media monitoring and measurement? What are you being tasked with? Is it just to listen to what's being said? So you were saying? Yeah, a whole host of, of different metrics and, and measurements. Um, but in terms of seeing what engages well with our audiences for the most part. Okay. So engagement. What else? What are, what are other people being measured on? Or what are they listening to? Nothing at all. Dead silence. Shock and awe. Pizza. Using mainly for crisis monitoring for clients or issues. Okay. Issues and crises as well. Okay. So anything else? One last one. One last thing that you are tasked with on listening on social. Sentiment. Sentiment. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to deal with that. All good things. Um, some of them are what we would call a, a leading metric, which is something that leads or is secondary to an overall metric, such as we want to increase sales, we want to increase awareness, things like that. But they are all important. So I would ask, uh, how many people here consider themselves beginners in this space, social media monitoring and measurement? Oh boy, be quiet. Um, intermediate? Anybody intermediate? We got one brave hand, two, three and a half. Any experts in the crowd? Don't be shy. If you think you're an expert, yeah, commit fully, young man. There we go. I just want to do that to get a sense of where we are. 
because a lot of people use this for very different reasons. One reason is my boss told me to. I see that a lot. Another is engagement. Um, very few people actually tie it to those top level strategic measures, which is interesting because that's why we're all here. So my tools, Radiant 6, Sysmo, Hootsuite, and Sprout Social. I use all four, actually. And it's interesting because only two of these are big enterprise level dashboards. Radiant 6 and Sysmos. So uh, knowing that I use those, you might ask, well, why are you using these two? Um, Hootsuite is freemium, as you may be aware. And Sprout Social is uh, very low cost. So there's a reason, because each of these are a tool. And when you're building a house, you don't just use a hammer, you use a saw, grinder, all that stuff. Each one of these has a specialty. That's why I use all four. So with Radian, um, this is the, so who here has had experience with Radian? Because they used to use it three years ago, okay. So a few of them. So what was your experience of it? Give me a word. Flexible. Okay. Did we have a good experience with it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's powerful when it's well set up uh, and it's hard to set up initially. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people shy away from it is the learning curve. So when I first came into York, I asked um, how long did it take you, and I was speaking to somebody on Sysmos actually, to get familiar with it. And they said six months when you become an expert. That's probably about how long it'll take you for Radiant 2, if not longer. So let me show you this graph. Now, I don't know if you can see this from the back row, but it's very interesting. This is G2 CrowdGrid for social media, media and monitoring dashboards. And up here, you've got Radium. And this is measuring market presence. So you can see that there are huge market presence, but this is actually measuring satisfaction. So you can see a very low level of satisfaction with Radium. Also with Sysmos. The Meltwater Buzz is just bringing up the rear here. Um, some of the interesting ones that I'm seeing are um, Bandwatch, sorry, Brandwatch, Viral Heat, and a few others. So if I were looking at a dashboard right now, which we actually are, we're going to RFP at York for social media, so media monitoring and measurement dashboard, I would probably give Brandwatch and Viral Heat a real look. A um, couple that aren't on there, I don't think. Uh, Spread Fast is also getting a lot of good press right now. And uh, Converse Social. Is another dashboard. It's being used at Shula School of Business right now, actually, because they're very keen on engagement, which is great. And Converse Social does a really good job of engagement. But you can see some of the uh, some of the contenders, uh, some of the old ones, are really starting to fall off that graph. And actually, if you look at it, Radian is heading back in this direction. So it's getting more share slightly, but it's actually getting lower satisfaction ratings. So. Some of you know this already, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing background because I'm going to want to get to the good stuff. But social media monitoring dashboards work in a very simple way if you've never used one before. It's like Google. You type in keywords, it goes out and queries its database and sees what it's got for those keywords. So there's nothing really native about it in that it doesn't go and auto sense what's happening based on top you give it. It's looking for keyword combinations. And just like with Google, you can do Boolean searches, ands, ors, nots, everything like that. So that metaphor is very accessible to a lot of people. And that makes it easy to dive into the, the shallow end of some of these very quickly. Because that's all you really need to know is you're looking for keywords. So I won't deal too much with breaking, but I'm going to use it as a case study for these big enterprise dashboards. And also because the lesson I can show you here on Radian is applicable to Sysmos and some other ones. Radian works on widgets, Sysmos doesn't, that's the biggest difference. And let me flip to Radian right now. So, one of the drawbacks of Radian is to use teeny tiny print. So from the back <laughs> row, I don't know if you're going to be able to see all this. The other thing is they use Flash. And they had an opportunity to rev their interface a couple of years ago and didn't, which just staggers me because why you would attach your software to Flash is like, why you would attach it to Papyrus as far as I'm concerned. So one of the use studies, and I was talking about this at Schuler the other day, was when you consider competitors versus industry and brand mentions. So I just did a quick little example here with Toyota, Hyundai, and Ford, their um, hybrid models. So one of the things I did was I took a look at total number of mentions. So we're looking for use cases here, you know, news you can use. Actionable intelligence is one of the things we get stuck on as marketers, as communicators, and social is trivia. 
Oh, that's interesting. We're up 2%. We're down 5%. Sentiment change point 5%. Who cares? That's not actionable. You're not going to go to the client and say, well, sentiment went up 0.75. There's a key learning coming out of that, which is don't worry about small numbers. So when we look at things like total amount of traffic, that goes across all of these dashboards. And here's an example I did where I took Toyota, Prius, as the industry. And I did um, Honda and Ford, their competing offers as competitors. And this is measuring traffic over a given period of time. So this is one of those key measures. And this is one of the things that you can take to a client, is you're able to see and compare your traffic versus the competition. Now, one other application of this is when you break it down. Sorry. Can you define traffic? Traffic is a total number of mentions. This is a bit tricky there. Um, sorry, that's Toyota. Bring up Toyota. <coughs> so traffic is a total number of mentions. So there's a few things that I encourage you to start with in terms of social media <laughs> monitoring and measurement. One is traffic, which is um, when you go in to get those mentions for Toyota, for uh, Hyundai, for whoever, what they bring back. So this is share of conversation, share of voice, to use a communications term. So ideally, you want your share of voice to be increasing, you want it to be increasing compared to the competition. So that's why those numbers are important. Sentiment I'll get into is another leading metric. But let me bring up a couple of pieces of information. So here we've got broken out I've taken a look at Honda, Toyota, and Ford in terms of total amount of traffic. This one is us grouping them by competitors in industry. And in another, any other session, I'm going to get into how you do this, but I know that you're not using radiance, so this is more of an example, the kind of leading metrics they might be interested in. So we have that, and I've broken out a couple of other interesting things here. Let's see Radian, as in most of the big dashboards, the ability to show, show change over time. So when we look at traffic, and the client wanted to know, are we getting more mentions online? Are we increasing our share of mentions compared to the competition? You can create these graphs that allow you to show the change in time. So we know, looking at this, that mentions of Ford hybrids are going down 22%. So that's impactful. That's interesting. So that's something you might want to find more information about. And using Radian, you can click and pull up your river of news to find out what all those mentions are and why they're going down. If you take a look here at Honda, you would see that's going up 12%, so that's significant. Again, using Radian, you would go in and click and find out more information. This one, down 6%, not that significant. Let me flip to another metric here. You mentioned sentiment. So one of those things that the big enterprise little dashboards like Radian system must do well um, and I can't be at well because I'll back off that in a minute. But it's sentiment. So they're able to do sentiment in a way that the smaller ones aren't. So I broke out a graph here for Honda versus Toyota versus Ford for their hybrid vehicles. And it's breaking out positive, negative, and either mixed or neutral sentiment. This is interesting because obviously you want people to be saying good things about you, and if they're not, you want to know why. So again, with these kind of dashboards, you can click into a data set, pull up what they call the river of news, which is the total mentions, and find out what's being said that's positive. So month over month, you see this negative growth. That's obviously a data point for the client. We're going to be able to say, why is this happening? So in a big enterprise dashboard like this, you go in, you pull up your results, and you see what's being said. Now, being cognizant of time, I won't spend too much more on this. And because it's flash, you can see this churn is like a dog. It gets hung up. What this will produce eventually is a list of all the mentions that were negative around that brand. Verbatim. Um, so like this. So it's going to identify Facebook, Twitter, all the mentions that it thinks are negative. It's going to pull in um, mainstream news, etc., etc. 
So this is where you go and you see, okay, are these actually false positives, first of all, because it's not a very smart piece of software. But second of all, why are there negative mentions? And I pulled in all languages so you can see the Spanish as well here. But this is the use case, I think, for a big enterprise dashboard. Now, let me pull a couple of other pieces of information. So can I ask a question? Or yeah, just absolutely. Um, so one of the things that I would find if I was looking at this, and I'm Toyota Canada, is I would want to know what's happening in my country, mm -hmm. and how, um, and one of the big challenges I've always found with these tools is how do you how do you get rid of the non-Canadian uh, conversation? Two, two things. One thing that's interesting is that you can't actually just filter for Canada. You yeah. can, but what happens is you lose most of your Facebook. That's because most Facebook traffic, even if it's Canadian, comes with U.S. servers and it's tagged as U.S. So unfortunately you can't just say Canada because you lose some significant mentions. Um, having said that, most Facebook is invisible to a piece of software like this because it's private. I'm a friend of boys, I see his updates. You guys don't, so you can't. So if you're monitoring Boyd, it wouldn't matter too much what Facebook was saying because he's not a big public page. So most of the conversation on Facebook is one-to-one -one or one-to-a-group, and it's not visible to a piece of software like this. But that's a short answer, is you can filter for Canada. But what you could do is set up two different data sets, one just for Canada for everything but Facebook, and then do Facebook, which is US and Canada. A few other things before we leave this. Uh, let me show you all of these up right now. Yes, I do. You can go in and segment some of your data to find interesting insights. So you always want to be able to give the client something they can use, that actual intelligence. So we look at some of these pie charts I brought up based on traffic. This one is retweeted usernames. So this is specific to Twitter, obviously. But this is going to give you some insight as to who's charging most of the conversation, who's creating most of those mentions, those retweets. So it'll give you the usernames. Now, I'm going to throw it to you. What's the use case for this potentially for a client if you know who is being retweeted the most? Influencers. Influencers. Yeah. Outreach. You identify these people, you start building a relationship with them. Then, hopefully, they'll take your message or at least be friendlier to you in the future. A few other things here. I'll bring this other one up. Hashtags mentioned. Now, what will be the use case for this? Maybe a bit less obvious. The other thing that, that's interesting about this is around a crisis. So when there's a crisis, people are going to start using hashtags, and they're probably not going to do a lot of research. They're just going to be expressing themselves, and the first thing that comes to mind. So you won't know about that in advance, because a lot of these are created ad hoc. So this is where it's useful, because in a crisis situation, you want to be able to quickly extract the hashtags that are of the most importance and monitor those. So that's why a graph like this gives you that ability to find out what the hashtags are around a specific issue. I'll show you two more before I leave reading. This is sources, and this will tell you Facebook. Now, reading does it in a, excuse me, ass backward kind of way, where they do Facebook and then they'll break out individual Twitter sources as opposed to all Twitter. But you can see, this will give you an idea of where you need to be having conversations. So if most of the brand conversations on Facebook, it's because you've got a big chunk of Facebook here. This one is about two-thirds Twitter. Almost, almost all of this other is going to be Twitter. So another useful insight, where is the conversation happening? Let me go back to my presentation. I know it's a lot of information in a really short period of time, but this sort of stuff, trust me, can be like a three-day lecture. So having said that, Here's something that's interesting, and this goes across, again, all the dashboards. What's the most important widget? So we've seen ones that deal with, for example, sentiment, um, retweeted usernames, things like that. I think this is the most important one, you. And if that sounds a little bit ingenuous, it's not. It's partly because there's no way to produce a report for management automatically. There are ones that claim to do it, but they really do a bad job. So every morning, every day, my assistant goes through the mentions and pulls out what the trends are, what the things other management needs to know, what they don't, the chaff from the wheat, what's trending, what's not, and that takes a person. 
Um, there's really no substitute for that right now. Come back to me in five or ten years, maybe the software will be so advanced that it'll do it for you. But right now, this is the most important widget, and there's no other way to do it. So you can see summary dashboards like this to get cranked out for management. But again, this isn't really accessible. So these companies will try to sell you on the idea of, oh, well, we have a summary dashboard. And you can just check in, and we'll give you the high level. But again, this isn't telling a story. Management wants to know, what do I need to be concerned about? What's the opportunity? Is there anything that's on fire? You're not getting away from this. OK, a caveat about sentiment. Don't believe the hype. So there's a really simple way that these companies get to what they call their 83% accuracy rule. So if you talk to Sysmos or Radian or Hootsuite or whoever, they say, wow, we have 83% accuracy on sentiment. And there's a reason for that, which is that 83% of what's online is neutral in sentiment. It's a retweet. It's a simple declaration. There's no bad words around it. And like a grade three student can tell you whether that's positive, negative, or neutral. So that's how they get to that claim that you're going to see 83, 85, 87% accuracy in sentiment. Where it breaks down is when you've got a negative. So for example, I really like this Caribbean place in York called the Islands. They do great jerk chicken. So if I tweet right now, I love the Islands, goddamn, their jerk chicken is the bomb. The sentiment uh, engine is going to pick up bomb and goddamn and call that a negative. <laughs> it really will. It's a dictionary. Now there are some software pieces out there that use what's called machine language processing or natural language processing which is basically taking the sentence, deconstructing it, subject, predicate, object, and then doing some intelligence. They can get up to about 95%. If you want to get any further, it's you actually going in and checking every single one, and that's a lot of work. So what's important isn't that 8% positive, 10% neutral. It's, is it going up or down, and is there a big spike? That's where it's interesting. That's where you need to watch. That's where you go into that data set and find out, okay, why is there a spike? Is it mostly false, or is there something behind that we need to be aware of? So Sysmos Heartbeat, I'm just getting into, and as you know, they just revved their um, interface a little while ago, about, uh, I think, three weeks a month, maybe. That's when I saw it come on. It was staggered for different clients. So I don't deal with that too much. But one thing that's really great about Sysmos that I absolutely rely on is their triggered alerts. Is anyone using triggered alerts in Sysmos yet? OK. So, we deal with a lot of issues at York, and a lot of large public institutions do. So you want to be aware of them when they happen. Now, mostly that's through word of mouth. Um, but Sysmos gives you the ability to set up a trigger alert, which is, I will email you when there's 20 tweets on an issue, on a topic, whether it's safety, whether it's students, etc., etc. So you can get this cranked out of Sysmos, and that acts as a tripwire. So that's not in any other software that I use right now, and that's why I think Sysmos is really great. Now, we have a license for it as part of our media monitoring anyway, so I don't have to pay for it. But that's a really strong use case for Sysmos. A lot of the stuff that I show you in Radian applies equally to Sysmos, so I won't get too deeply into it, and quite frankly, I'm still at C in the interface, so I won't go into that right now. But it's clearly the equal, and I think with this new interface rev, I think we're going to see Radian start to diminish even more. David versus Goliath. I mentioned at the start a couple of um, pieces of software that I use that are small, freemium, or uh, very low cost. So why would I use those when I got these big enterprise dashboards that obviously do such a great job with sentiment? Um, the reason is because they're a tool that does something very specific. So Hootsuite, I absolutely rely on every day. And one of the reasons is it does such a great job with Twitter, with streams, with, with being that quick first look in the morning. So every morning I come to work, I want to know, is there, is there an issue? Is there a potential crisis brewing? Is there something we need to get on right away? So before I dive into that big enterprise dashboard, I take a look at Hootsuite. Because of that stream metaphor, it's a very quick and easy look. And quite frankly, Twitter is where most of the issues and crises and concerns are going to kick off first. So Twitter is where you want to be looking for any of these things. So quick show of hands, who's used Hootsuite or is using it? OK, so about as many as Sysmos. Okay. I'll show you some of the things that I use Hootsuite for in terms of actionable intelligence. So let me fork it over to my dashboard. Now the great thing about Hootsuite is that you, it's freemium, so you can start right away in the free model, and it goes up very easily, very fast. The other thing is they've actually integrated an enterprise-level dashboard called Uberview into their interface recently. 
So because of that, you can go from freemium to a team where you start assigning cases to people to a full-on enterprise-level dashboard. That's why I like it. They're also very aggressive in this post-secondary space. They have Hootsuite University, where you can study uh, issues not only about Hootsuite, but social media broadly, and a learning program. So when we look at the sort of potential uses here, you can see the metaphor is basically a bunch of tabs and these streams. So these streams are bringing in mentions based on a bunch of different criteria I set. So for example, if I go into, uh, let's try, oops, this is a funky mouse, number two, or if I go into hybrids. Yeah, so I set up some streams here based on that case that I was using before around Toyota Canada, the Prius. So this is very easy to use because you can set up some interesting things. So I mentioned about sentiment. Using this, I can set up a search for anything to do with Prius that's positive in sentiment, or what it thinks is positive in sentiment. And you do that, and I'll show you with some very simple um, tags. This one right here, there's no questions today, but this is, is anybody asking a question about Prius in Canada? This one is how recent mentions are. So if I want any mentions, when I set this up, it was the 20th, about Toyota Prius since 2015-04-20, here's where they'll come in. I've also done, if you take a look here, hybrid cars or energy efficient. So this is essentially all I do. I set up just some search terms, just like I did with, with Radian. And I can use my OR, my AND, my NOT, all those Boolean operators that we're familiar with. So what I've done here is I want to see what the competition is up to. Hybrid cars, or energy efficient cars, or green cars, minus Prius. And you can see here too, you can append a location in this query to find local results. So if you just want Canada or you just want Toronto, that's where you'll do it. Now the cool thing here is, and I can show you afterwards how to do this, show examples pulls up all these examples. So when you're entering these terms here under search, <coughs> Just hit show examples and it shows you how to do it. Negative sentiment, positive sentiment, time, sent from or to somebody, hashtags, all this sort of stuff. So this is one reason, again, why it's very easy to get into this. So you can see how the search terms work. Pull this one up. You can set up keywords, which are essentially the same thing. So I set up a keyword search here for Canada, Honda Canada, or Mazda Canada. Another search here. This one is obvious because it's mentions of Toyota Canada. So if you haven't got somebody um, on Twitter monitoring mentions of the brand, you should. And it's easy to integrate it into Hootsuite. Also, we talked about language. You saw that we got some really funky results from the Spanish speaking you can, spe you can specify English here. And obviously in conjunction with the location setting, you can get just English mentioned in Canada, Ontario, and Canada. Let's see if I come up with some other examples here. Set up a whole bunch of streams. Oh, and this is a Facebook search. So I'm searching Facebook in this one for mentions. All these have been Twitter, as you can see. So again, this is a lot of information, but you can see how when you come in first thing in the morning, can we do a check and see what the world is saying about your brand? What the client may need to be aware of? This is a very quick and easy way to do it. And this is all within my free version. This is actually all within free. So there's some things you can do within paid, and the way it goes is free, pro, premium, or enterprise. The pro gives you the ability to get some things called apps. So I have TrendSpotter set up which is something that's designed to um, suss out some trends and things you may want to be aware of. It's a plug, it's an app that you put into Hootsuite. That's with the Pro license. If you want premium, you can do some interesting things here, like a team. So you can set up a team. Right now I've got two. And you can assign things to people. So if there's an issue that comes in, uh, and I've done this before for Intuit, so we had a product which was really only supported through social media. So I set up a team on Hootsuite, 
And if people came in with complaints, customer issues, we would assign it. I had a guy working in Belleville. I only saw him twice a year. But he was a great customer service rep. I added him to a team at Hootsuite, and I was able to assign cases to him. He would resolve the case, he would mark it closed, and then we would move on. So I talk about scalability, and this is a really good example of it, because in Hootsuite, you don't reach a dead end where it's old, we can't go from here. You go all the way up to an enterprise dashboard, like I said, like the review. So you can see there's some pretty powerful stuff at play here. So if I go back to my streams, this is how it's done. You just add a stream. Mentions, retweets, follows, favorites, and then you can get into some searches. It also has the ability to do stuff like monitor Instagram, not just Facebook, but Twitter. So this is my own feed. It's not terribly impactful. But you can see some basic stuff going on there. So I'm going to try to leave Hootsuite for now. I'm going to just info bomb you. This is something I do in every presentation. I just bury people with information and I see some glazing and then they're like, oh, what do I do next? So I'm going to give you some um, reading material and some next steps if you want at the end. So don't be afraid. But um, I'm going to say goodbye to Hootsuite for now. So this is just a screen cap of that how-to that I showed you. Very accessible when you're entering a search in Hootsuite, how it's done. And the last one I mentioned today, the sucker, Sprout Social. Has anyone heard of this one even? A few notes, so can you use it? Anybody use it? No? Okay. If you used all four of these, it would have been a star. You would have got extra pizza. Only three, only three. Three, only three? You, you only get the pizza. Three, three, three. Um, Sprout Social, I love, I love, I love because it's our institutional memory. So even if I wanted to get rid of it now, I couldn't because it goes back to 2011. And it does something which is very interesting, which is it gives us change over time. So some of the graphs that I get in Sprout Social, I think it's pretty cheap to start with this. It's like 60 a month, I think. We have a grandfather deal where it's cheaper than that. But this will show us likes versus unlikes over time on our page. On Facebook, for example, it will show us impressions and it will show us things like how many people have interacted with us and how many stories they've created. And the story in Facebook is did you like, comment, share, stuff like that. So you can see this is very graphically rich. This does something that Facebook Insights actually doesn't do as well, which is very interesting to me. Because I do like the native dashboards, and they're really good for monitoring, for measurement especially. But when you've got to create a report quickly, that's when I go to Sprout. And I get asked all the time, how are we doing year over year? With very little notice, or like, are we on track for this quarter? And because of that, I rely on Sprout because it's able to crank out those reports quickly and easily. If I had to go into Facebook and I had to go and download all the data from like a year ago and crunch it in Excel, I'd be there a day. I can get a quick look at Sprout at how we're doing performance-wise in a very short period of time. The other thing it does really well is breaking down your content. So if you want to find out, for example, as a whole, is our engagement rate up? It gives you it right here. Uh, are we reaching more people? It gives you it right here. So this is kind of like your, your health checkup, your ongoing health checkup of a page, of an account. Is there anything you need to be aware of so that you can change whether you're going to hit or miss your quarterly annual numbers? And then you can see what content is doing really well. Because one thing you always want to be doing you can't do a traditional split or an A-B test um, in the way that we normally think of it on social, but you can definitely see what content is excelling and do more of it. So I always tell people, very simple formula for social. Do more of what works, do less of what doesn't, rinse, repeat. Sounds a bit fatuous at first, but it's actually the basis of some advanced business intelligence such as lean startup, agility, things like that. That's where this starts, seeing what works. And that's what Sprout does for you. Most, all, Flip it open. But just to give you an idea, for Twitter it does something very similar. So let me give you an aggregate on, this is my personal account. Was that previously for Facebook? That was, that was Facebook I was looking at right here. And I've anonymized it by taking out some of the identification. But since this is mine, I don't mind it. So um, you can see up here, quickly you get your two week, month, two month, three month view, and then calendar. And that'll tell you how many mentions, 
clicks, retweets, all those leading indicators that you may be required to report on to the client for Twitter. So let me flip over to Sprout really briefly. Bring that sucker up. So yeah, in Sprout right here, we've got Twitter profiles, Facebook pages. So if I click on my Facebook page, this is one I just set up recently, so it's got very little results. But you can see your impressions by how many users are here. This stuff isn't available because it's still coming in. But you can see how many stories were created by how many users. Stories again, shares, comments, likes, etc. And then you can see the content. So again, this is very brand new. I've got any engagement or likes so far. But this is where you find out what you're doing well. So if I quickly want to find out, you know, what's the best reach? Well, it's this post right here. If I want to find out, you know, how many people are talking about something, it's all zeros right now. But engagement, here's the most engaged post. Engagement was 12.5 actually on this one. So this is my quick health check. And that's what I think the value of Sprout is. And then if I want to, I just go back as far as I need. And this is just Facebook and Twitter, though? This is Facebook and Twitter. You can pull in uh, Google Plus and I think a few other things. And that's interesting because um, I'm going to have to speed this up. I'm sure you're all glad to hear that. But this is really just Facebook and Twitter right now. You can put in Google Plus. You can do a LinkedIn group. But these do really well with old school media. One thing Radian doesn't do well with, for example, is Instagram. And that's a real hole for us because we're trying to reach at the University of 18 to 24 demographic. And they are on Instagram. Um, another interesting thing about Radian is that it doesn't do um, forums very well. So we rely on Reddit, visibility into Reddit, and actually also red flag deals. Now you wouldn't think red flag deals, there's a lot of conversation going on, but actually there is. And a lot of things are considered products in red flag that you wouldn't otherwise think are products like a university, like a course, like a faculty. So for that reason, we really need visibility into those that we don't get in the big dashboards as well.